Good evening, folks. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Knights of the Pageless Library. We are a little podcast dedicated to reviewing audiobooks. I am Bo Knight, joined as always by my brother Ryan Knight, and today we are taking a look at the story of King Arthur and his knights, written by Howard Pyle and narrated by David Thorne. There's also a female narrator, but I can't seem to find her name. Do you have that anywhere, Ryan? No. Oh, is that the one who does the uh, like little interlude stuff, stuff yeah. in between? Yeah. Yeah, in between. No, I didn't. Uh, I haven't been able to see her name as being credited, which is kind of unfortunate. But uh, maybe we'll dig that up while we get into it. Um, just right up front, if anybody, um, if you've listened to this book, if you want to listen to this book, if you want to just send us anything, uh, kotpl.pod at gmail.com is the easiest way to get a hold of us right now. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Reddit, all, all over the internet. So anywhere you want to get a hold of us, please feel free to do so. Is is the bit shoot and mines, are those still up? Um, They're probably still up. I haven't been keeping them up to date because I'm a lazy piece of shit. So oh, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't even know what those are. So I was I'm just be, curious. They're supposed to be like a YouTube alternative where you're – direct followers can contribute directly to you instead of going through like any ad sense or anything like that. Oh, but okay. I haven't been putting too much time and effort into it because again, I'm really lazy. So no, that's fair. <laughs> so we picked this book up on audible. That's generally where we listen to our stuff. Usually if uh, we're going to listen to it anywhere else, we will definitely be sure to let you guys know about it. If there's somewhere else you guys think is better than audible these days, p- please, Feel free to let us know. We would uh, we'd love to check that kind of stuff out. We always like when there is alternatives to the, you know, what I would consider the biggest and easiest way to get a hold of books. So yeah, and on demand. Yeah, but definitely, we've said this in the past. We haven't said it for a while. If you just found this in some random like bit torrent corner of the internet and you pirated it somehow, uh, we don't recommend that. Because we are knights. We are not pirates, so we don't steal this stuff. We do pay for almost everything we get. If we got it for free, too, we will let you know that ahead of time, that we were <laughs> gifted it. Um, or if it's something you could listen to for free on YouTube or what have you, we will definitely let you guys know that. But we do not recommend pirating the stuff. We recommend you know, paying the people who created it their due diligence as well. Yeah, I mean they created it if you want to if you want to partake you got to you got to pay for entry. Yeah. Exactly. With that, I think we uh we jump right into this one, huh? So this book is super old. <laughs> it, it's not the oldest thing we've done. It's not the oldest thing, but parts of it felt like it was. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Yeah, whoa, whoa, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Without so, yeah, front this, loading it. This book was written in 1903, but I mean, the audio version that we listened to came out in 2006, but for some reason, it sounds older than that. I mean, 2006 is, we were still listening to like books on tape back then. So, that's, that's a pretty decent amount of time. But I agree, there are parts of this that feel even older than that, unfortunately. Yeah. So, what did you think of our boy Howard? Oh, no, no, I mean David Thorne. How did you? How do you think he did as a narrator on this? I think he did okay. I, I mean, the the unfortunate part is pretty much everybody except Merlin sounds the same for the yeah, most part. But Merlin, for some reason, sounds like a creepy ghoul. Yeah, Merlin's voice was pretty strange ah, i am merlin yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's almost like if you were making fun of like a wizard character Dude, that it's is kinda... exactly what it feels like <laughs> yeah that it... wizard up there in his tower doing god knows what 
Yeah, and then the wizard looks out the window and he's like, eh, get off of my porch. Yeah, dude, he sticks his hands out and like lightning shoot everywhere. Like, <laughs> yeah. Behold my awesome power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I, I can't really give David Thorne a pass. I know this is an older recording and stuff, but I just, his his narration wasn't really very enjoyable and it definitely didn't add to this story by any means. It's very monotone and flat and maybe you want to fall asleep. Yeah, exactly. And again, all the characters, and there's quite a few characters throughout the story, they all sound the same aside from Merlin, even the yeah. females and stuff. So the, Yeah, which is really weird. I, I didn't even I guess I didn't even really pick up on that until you brought it up, but that's true. He doesn't change his voice for the females either. That's an interesting choice. No, he really doesn't. And it just it makes this I feel like a really good narrator might have been able to take this and elevate it a little bit past where it's at, but I don't think that David Thorne was that guy to do that, unfortunately. I guess we should just hang out on Howard Pyle here for just a second too. This guy was like prolific back in the very early nineteen hundreds. And he also has, you know, stories of Robin Hood and things like that. So he he has some of these <clears throat> foundational stories that we get told over and over again these days and now for sure i don't think he came up with any of this stuff did he like he didn't come up with robin hood or king arthur obviously i mean i don't know i guess i don't know like where like the you know the, the, the true story of like the sword and the stone comes from it maybe maybe it was just like a legend you know passed down word of mouth and finally somebody decided to write it down I that's kind I of what know. i that's what i feel like happened is that it was maybe a collection you know, yeah, exactly. The Sword and the Stone had been retold already back then. Maybe it was just passed on word of mouth. And maybe Howard Pyle was one of the guys who was just greedy enough to be like, I'm going to write this all down and I'm going to publish it. <laughs> I mean, we got to give it up to Howard Pyle, though, because in in the book itself, all those illustrations in there are done by him, too. So he did the writing and the drawings, which I think is pretty impressive to me. Yeah, and that, that would be impressive if you had a full, fully fledged book with... Um, illustrations as well as the story that would be pretty cool can you give like a brief description of what this is i mean obviously everybody's gonna know yeah but it's so it's like a collection of short stories about like king arthur i i I'm, from what i get online this is like the early years of the king arthur tales so you, you okay. get like you know like how he got he got a hold of the sword and like you know like him his kind of early years as king even though he doesn't do a lot of kingly stuff okay yeah he, he, and yeah he's also definitely because it is the story of king arthur and his knights there are diversions in this as well that king arthur is not even in the stories yeah so. the the second half kind of splits into three parts right and it's it's about like merlin and like two other specific knights right not that the stories feel very distinct to me exactly <laughs> yeah that's one way to put it this book is actually, I mean, it's not long. We It's, it's 11 hours and 30 minutes. Yeah. So, and, and we've said before, you know, 10 hours is a really good length for an audiobook. Uh, this one did not need this much time, in my opinion. This, it felt very long. Oh, yeah. It, it felt like 100 hours. I'm going to be honest. It was like, oh, my God, <laughs> when is this going to fucking end? <laughs> and I've listened to Game of Thrones, all of them, front to back, multiple times. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> if you wanted, you could. I mean, should we just say it? Don't, don't, don't purchase this book. Can I just say that? You can't. It says I'll, I'll it's $10.50, it. but. Okay, ten dollars yeah. ten dollars maybe, maybe 50 cents yeah you don't yeah don't definitely don't waste your hard-earned money on this one i mean if that's not spoilery for my recommendation i oh did you let's just get into the recommendation like a little bit i i the the bits i enjoyed of this book were hearing names like guinevere and morgana but that's mm -hmm. only because of my love for other things that it's like, oh, that's where those names come from. Yeah, I agree with that. But I thought the beginning really of this, it. and I thought the beginning was kind of fun. Like when he first, when he's a little kid and he finds out that, Ooh. you know, he's 
Uther's son and gets the sword and stone and, or the sword out of the well yeah and, and it's and it's an accident and he like he's just like looking for a sword and he's like oh was, somebody left it in the stone right here let me just take it out that's right i didn't know that it was like an accident that he got it right away i guess right but, i like that kind of stuff but it very quickly devolves into just it, it and i mean back then back when this was written it's probably it was probably very interesting to have these obvious heroes you know they could do no wrong but these days it's just been retold so many times and in better ways in my opinion that and the writing feels so stiff it's it's that there are moments when he's like sir galahad i ask you to speak said king arthur galahad turns to speak i will speak and that's all he says <laughs> it's like what it, it's, I, I don't know. It felt very stiff, like the whole way through. Stiff and yet very poetic at the same time. Unfortunately, yeah, but not like flowery. He's not using like big words. No, it's more poetic, as in a kind of how do I even explain it? Heareth unto thee, doth I speaketh to you know sir galahad what doth say it you sir galahad and then it but then it switches right back to just like standard english yeah. and i'm like where did yeah. that come from <laughs> you challenge my honor the, the, the who art thou king arthur looks right up. i am none of your concern <laughs> i asked you your name exactly. knight i will not give my name until i beat you in battle battle commenced king arthur won Oh, don't. Uh, yeah. Okay. We, okay. So, I, I want to talk a little bit more about like the battle scenes because they're terrible. Oh my God. They're so bad. Yeah. So if it wasn't obvious already, our, you, what is this two pretty hard thumbs down on this story? Oh yeah. This don't. book's a big pile of crap. Yeah. And it, it, which is unfortunate. Um, so there's our recommendations. So now, yeah, we'll just kind of rip on this book for a little while. So <laughs> if <laughs> Uh, please do tell me about these battle scenes, if you could call them that. Well, I, I, yeah, because I mean, very early on, right? There's there's like a scene. He comes up to this guy's like bridge, and he has like all the shields hung up of all the knights he beats, and like this just makes King Arthur mad. What what were you gonna say? The sable, the sable. Oh, knight. I'm 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 surprised. Do you remembered? <laughs> yeah, he like comes up and like knocks on his shield, and then like they they fight, and it. But, like, it, I don't even – that's, like, about all the description you get. It's, like, they, they rode at each other. What, King Arthur was still in the saddle. The other man was not. King Arthur gets back on the ground and said, fight me on the ground, sir. They did. King Arthur did not bleed in this fight. But the other knight did, covered in blood. That's, like, they don't, they don't talk about, like, clashing swords or, like, their footing or, like, their stances or, like, any of that stuff. And, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I guess it is a child's book, but, like – that's kind of like what I'm looking for is like, I don't, I don't want to hear like if I'm, if I'm hearing about knights fighting, like I kind of want to know like how the fight went, not just who won. And I would say too, that the Sable Knight fight is one of the least egregious throughout the book. Exactly. And it's, it's pretty bad still. Right. Cause there's, there are other parts where there is a ton of description on, you know, they get their weapons ready and they mount their horses and they go forth onto the battlefield and they see their enemies across the hill and they clash and 40 minutes later the fight is over and i'm like yeah. what it, i mean it's that quick they they just breeze through the stuff that should have been high action and high very interesting they just gloss over it and move on oh and can we talk about the freaking idios idiocy of king arthur like hiding in Guinevere's court by just wearing a uh, hat. Uh, yes, please, please like, talk oh, about it. <laughs> well, it. I, I just, I guess, I don't really get like his thought process of because Merlin disguises him, and I put this in quotes because I kind of get the vibe that he was just wearing a hat, not like it changed him. Maybe it did. I think I it changed the, his appearance. It, but, but it, it didn't. Like they don't really describe how he looks different. He's just no. wearing a hat. No, not at all. And also, the idea of just wearing a hat that disguises you for a extended period of time is very silly. 
Well, it's it's silly, and especially because like King Arthur would have known that it's disrespectful to wear a hat uh, by somebody of that station when you are lower than them. Right. Like I, so it doesn't make any damn sense. It's like if, if King Mer, Mer, if Merlin is like as all knowing, like powerful sorcerer was what oh, they call him. Which, don't get me started. I, I don't. Yeah, can he do <laughs> magic or is he just like a con man? I don't know, but all I know is I found myself every time merlin would have because merlin is like a soothsayer too so he supposedly could see the future and i found every time merlin would talk i would just roll my eyes because like when he tells him about excalibur and he's like i ask you king arthur which which would you rather have the sword of excalibur or its sheath oh yeah dude that part is so (laughs) fucking stupid he's like he's like well Merlin, of course, I would much rather have Excalibur. It is an exquisite sword and is the best sword I've ever seen in the land. So that is a very silly question of you, Merlin. Well, in that, King Arthur, I would say you are wrong. Because if you have the sheath, then you cannot bleed. And I'm like, this sword was a sort of legend that nobody knew about before Arthur got a hold of it. Yeah, and I yet, don't get and, that. And yet Merlin has like he has like its instruction manual like in his pocket and he's yeah. like oh, it says here on page sixty three, Arthur, that you didn't read. That it, yeah. yeah, if you have the sheath in your possession, you cannot bleed during battle. Didn't you notice with your battle during, with the sable knight that you did not bleed and yet your enemy he doth bledeth a lot? And I'm well, like what the fuck? That and like, you know, later when he is like his sister hates him for literally like no reason. I mean, yeah, she hates him no. because he refuses to put her son on the round table because he's not a good knight. But right. he later she's like, can I borrow Excalibur? And he's like, of course you can. Oh it's God. like, what, are you so dumb? What, are you the d- dumbest man alive? I think so. I, 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 I honestly. <laughs> I, I feel like King Arthur actually comes off really bad in this story because most of the time he like he perceives that somebody is sliding him, so he duels them. That's like what his personality is. He he doesn't do yeah, any like and, kingly stuff. No, and not only that. Af- so after he fights the Sable Knight with Excalibur, he literally is like. This sword is too powerful. I must lock it away and never use it unless it's a dire circumstances. Yeah, what? I'm like, I thought that was the whole... I thought that was like Arthur's shtick was that he had Excalibur so he was near undefeatable because he has this amazing fey sword. Which, can we hang out for just a second? On oh yeah, I forgot about how the fey. He gets it? Yeah. I forgot all about the fey. Uh, you would be... I would not you know hold that against you that you forgot about them because they have all of 30 seconds in the book that is pointless yeah because they, yeah they like come out of the lake and then they're like gone and then they're back again and then or they're like he like goes into their realm for some reason and then it's like oh he was there <laughs> for like 20 milliseconds it's like what are you talking yeah. about i got so annoyed though when he gets excalibur because he has to you know he has to go out in the middle of the lake because there's an arm just holding excalibur up in the air and I love how he goes to the boat, or no, 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 there is no boat, and the Fae appear to him and say, well, all these knights have failed at doing this because you have to have two things, and it's like un- unrelenting courage and, you know, no questions of yourself or something like that. And I love how he's just like, I have those things, and they're like, okay, you may proceed. I'm <laughs> like, like, what the like, f- sweet. There was no challenge there. Yeah, Ooh. nice. Can, can we talk about the the knight, like the lich guy that he fights? Not even fights. Like they get into like that contest. Which why would you agree to this contest? The guy's like, oh, we'll we'll, we'll have a contest of skill. Like, uh, you can hit me in the neck with a sword, and if it doesn't oh. kill me, I get to hit you. <laughs> it's like, what? Who would agree to that? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I was wondering that too because yeah, especially after he. Freaking anybody who says if you hit me in the neck, you know, we'll we'll hit each other in the neck and whichever one of us is still standing is the winner. I'd be like, Yeah, no, I'm I'm obviously not doing that. Because yeah, anybody who challenges pass. you to that, yeah, they clearly have something up their sleeve for why they would agree to it in the first place. And and the way that he tricks him is just by coming up to him and grabbing the necklace off of him. That's all he does. That's it's there's there's no like 
there's no like trickery. It's just like, and I, he took it off of him and he, he dies. It's like, oh, well, that was a pointless story, wasn't it? It was really pointless. Yeah. And it was really unfortunate. And there's a lot of those parts in this book, I felt like, where there might have been a slight amount of buildup, and then it's just n- no payoff. Oh, and what's the question he asks him? Like, what's what does a woman desire most? Yeah, that is what he asks him, and he has to come up with the answer to it, right? It's before he strikes his head or something like that? Yeah, he has like a year and a day. Yeah, <sighs> yeah for some reason. Yeah. Can we also... Why are there so many kings in this story? I don't know. Because <laughs> uh, I was under the impression that once he became king, Arthur, king of the Britons, he was the king. But then they're like, and then there was also king so-and-so and king so-and-so with his two sons and king this and that. And I'm like, why are there so many kings that I thought he was the king? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Doesn't make any I, sense. I don't really get it either. And yeah, I don't. Why would anybody listen to like a kid that pulled a sword from a stone? I. <sighs> Plus, it's all. If you really stop and think about it, it kind of annoys me because the way it's set up with Merlin making the sword in the anvil. He, he already knows the outcome of this. He already knows. So, what is the purpose of all of it if? he already knows how it will turn out in the future i I guess i don't understand that like i hate i hate when there's somebody who already knows the future and they're making decisions based on that uh, knowledge yeah i don't merlin is a weird character like he's such a weirdo in this book yeah and the way he gets tricked and like killed is so dumb yeah i You'll have to even remind me. I can't even remember what happened to him. Because, like, Morgana, like, Arthur's sister, sends one of her, like, pages or scribes to learn under Merlin. Yeah, Merlin, like, falls in love with her. And then she's like, drink this thing. And he's like, hmm, this is a queer thing. You ask me to drink. And Merlin (laughs) drank. And he drinks it. And then he dies. And as he's dying, he's like, I have been tricked. I have been betrayed. (laughs) So dumb. I, I do remember that now. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know. It's, it's not what I was expecting, that's for sure. No, it was a, it was a huge letdown, honestly, for me. Um, again, I feel like if you're looking for a story that involves King Arthur and his knights, this has been retold countless times elsewhere and probably far better than this. Yeah. Just watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, cool. it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> I yeah. started watching that the other day, and at least it makes you laugh, so at least you get something out of it. I mean, anytime I hear a round table, you know, I just see them dancing when they're like, Knights of the Round Table, and they're just yeah. all dancing, and he's like, maybe let's not go back to yeah, Camelot. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's not go to Camelot. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love, too, when they... <laughs> when... Because Merlin made the round table for Uther Pendragon, right? Right, yeah. And I love how he's like, Oh, <laughs> you need Arthur in order to make this all as good as it possibly can be. You need something of stature. You need a giant round table, which I, I don't remember the dude's name. I, I'll just throw one out there. I'm sure it's wrong. But he's like, which Sir Pelinor has in his basement because he was bequeathed it by your father when he died. And yeah. it's just it's, collecting dust yeah, in his it's, basement. It's, it's in his storage unit. We just got to go get it. <laughs> and they... <laughs> They're, they're like, it will seat up to 50 noble knights. And I'm just thinking in my head, how fucking big is this table? Yeah, 50 it's, it's people? Huge. Yeah, 50 people? That's like an Olympic swimming pool table. Like, that's gigantic. Well, that and like the one seat, right? That like, if you're not like a, what, I don't even remember the stipulations, but like, if you're not fit enough to sit in that one seat, you just die. Yes, you just die. <laughs> And it's not, if I remember right, it's not even King Arthur's seat. It's like supposed to be like his right hand knight, right? Like the guy, like the guy yeah. below him. Yeah, it's saved. Yeah, and it he, it's not filled in this story. That's later to come. Yeah, but but I'm pretty sure Berlin literally says like, if they're not fit, they die, and then just move on. Like, like yeah. Wait, wait, how do you die? <laughs> like what? Yeah. What? Also, why do you know that? Has that happened already? Like, yeah, exactly. 
I don't get it. It's just a chair. The character of Merlin in this freaking, uh, yeah, he pisses me off. I like the character of Merlin in the Disney Sword in the Stone way more. I haven't seen that in a long time. I started to watch it with the kids the other day, and that that Merlin is both funny and he isn't so like, I know this will happen because I know the truth. He, you know, he just is like taking guesses because he says that he knows somebody will arrive at his house, but he doesn't know who it is and he doesn't know where they are, but they should be arriving in 15 minutes or something like that. That That is much more uh, like character development type of soothsaying than the Merlin in this story. Who is yeah, like, who's just like an annoying, condescending douchebag. Yeah. Especially the whole thing surrounding freaking Excalibur just pissed me off because he tells Arthur about Excalibur and he says that nothing is known of this sword. You know, nobody can get to it. Many knights have tried, but nobody can do it. You should take on this quest in order to obtain this great relic for yourself. But then right after Arthur gets it, Merlin knows everything about it. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Well, and who made the sword is what I don't understand. Where yeah, did it they come don't... from? I don't know. The world building in this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, one of the forests is called literally the Forest of Adventure. Yeah, what? I know. It's like, <laughs> uh, that's it? <laughs> come on. People would laugh at you if you were the DM and you're like, hey, you guys, you're entering the Forest of Adventure. And they're like, what? The Forest of what again? <laughs> Forest of what? Yeah. This is the forest of doom. <laughs> oh my god. Huh. Oh, are you are you tired of beating this noble horse? Yes, I am, honestly. I I don't even wanna I don't wanna waste people's time more than just telling them don't listen to this book. Yeah. Probably Stay all away. Said. Yeah. Don't don't waste your time. So Um yeah. So thank you all for listening. Don't listen to this book. <laughs> Um, and you got anything else, Ryan, you, you want to say? We got the email in there at the beginning. I mean, we can mention it again, kotpl.pod at gmail.com. Please shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, um, absolutely. Anything else? Hey. Nope, I think that's it for this one. Yeah, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.